Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning into the channel. So today is Friday and I don't know, I'm just kind of like TGIF. So um, yeah, in the home department, I feel like so much better. I feel like today is going to just be a lot more peaceful and relaxing. Um, you guys saw that I did my morning routine before I started work. And since I didn't have any appointments, like, you know, promptly first thing in the morning, I went ahead and did my um, 10 minutes of weekly home blessing. Actually, it was 12, but I give myself that little grace way, especially when I'm recording, that cuts into time. And then if there's ever anything I wanna finish off, I give myself permission to do that. The whole point is to try not to get carried away. So um, I'm sure, you know, if you're new to this system, you may have questions. So with the weekly home blessing for me, I have just learned to scale it back um, with the vacuuming. When I first started, um, you guys know I started with the fly lady system. I thought I was supposed to vacuum my whole home in 10 minutes and I was like racing and girl, it was like a whole obstacle course in here. And by the end of it, I was like sweating and um, even during that whole thing i was like so annoyed about it but yeah it makes it makes me it feels challenging to come back week after week when i feel like the expectation is to vacuum the whole house or else you're a failure so over the years i've just kind of found what works for me and what works for me is to work on my high traffic areas like i have about time to get to about three to three to maybe four spaces a week and this is how I choose to prioritize it. Uh, the first thing that I do is my master bedroom and my kids room. Those two places get vacuumed every week. Also the living room, unless it's like my week to zone clean, in which case the living room is probably already well vacuumed and mopped. But I'm just gonna say those three areas. And then usually for the last place, I, I don't know, if you guys are like me, there's already things that are bothering you, that have already been nagging you, that are on the back of your brain. And so I, I kind of go for those areas. So that fourth position can vary from week to week. So this week, I just felt like I've been zone cleaning in my master bedroom, the bathtubs are looking good, the showers are looking good, and the floors are looking like crap. So I was like, well, let me just get in there and do a little bit of a better job than what I would normally do. Cause sometimes I will vacuum in there and like just a real quick whoop de whoop get out. And sometimes I won't, like I, I don't have the time to do so because I wanna focus on a different area. So that's what I chose to do today, kind of like as my specialty project. And so, um, but I'm not worried about it because um, usually I come back again next week. So if there is something that comes up and I'm like, oh, you know, the stairs are looking really rough. I can work on it next week. Also, I will be in zone five next week. So I can, I will absolutely be vacuuming all of the entryway. So that's my office. That's my, um, oh no, the, it's zone five. Yeah, zone five is the living room. So I could basically use that time to vacuum my upstairs living room really well. My downstairs living room, entryways for zone one, um, my dining room for zone one. So as we go through the zones, I have an opportunity to get a very thorough and you know well done vacuuming job. But for my weekly stuff, it's just really, I got 10 minutes and what's going to be the most impactful thing for me to do. So uh, I'm gonna pull up my Notion board so we can kind of see where we are for the day. Cool, so uh, these are the pillars of my system. One thing that is not on here is my daily cleaning. So. You guys know the drill, dishes, laundry, hot spots. So I was able to work on that today. Um, for my weekly home blessing today, I vacuumed. And I have a thought about that that I will share with you And just, actually, let me share it with you now. Yeah, I was just thinking about the weekly home blessing that um, one goal that I've been trying to stick with that I think might be completely unnecessary is I feel like my weekly home blessing has to be done within a seven day time span. And even though, you know, that doesn't always happen, it's always like, well, I'm gonna give myself grace. It's okay, girl, you, you dropped the ball, but it's okay. But I think I'm going to give myself even more grace on that because I'm like, I feel like 
I don't know, I could just, that's an area where I could be more flexible with myself, um, you know, and if it takes me a week and a half to get it done, so what? If it takes me two weeks, like all of these things are better than what I used to do before. And so going forward, I'm not going to map out like a specific day, like vacuuming on Monday, mopping on Tuesday. Like I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to set a goal to try to get, you know, three to four pillars worked on every day. Obviously my daily cleaning has to be done every day that's the only one that's non-negotiable for me but if i can get another two or three pillars tossed in um that would be great and some days it will be my weekly home blessing and some days it won't be like i could prioritize zone cleaning or something else but i was just thinking like i think i'm being too demanding with myself for this season of my life um when i was like you know with the kids and not working it was very realistic for me to just squeeze one of those in but um, I'm finding that it's becoming difficult that's a way that I'm going to adjust to give myself a little bit of grace is instead of feeling like I have to get all four pillars in in a day if I can get three that is a 100% if I can get four that's 110% that's extra credit and so um, but my goal is to not go more than two days uh, without hitting something so if I don't do my weekly home blessing today then I need to make sure that like every two days I need to make sure that I'm getting one because what I don't want is a situation where like I'm not doing it at all like I'm only focusing on the three pillars that I like the most and so I don't want that so um, I'm gonna have to find my stride with this but um i was like yeah there's really no rule that all these things have to be done within the week like that's ideal but um again like that's a place where i can give myself a little more flexibility so anyway let me show you guys what else i'm going to try to be working on today okay so yeah i just went ahead and checked that i got my vacuuming done so i'm just gonna keep working on this list and um, so I continued to work in my bathroom. So today I really want to work in my closet. Like this closet honestly could have used like the whole week of zone cleaning, but um, I'm, you know, I can only do what I can do. I am a full time working mom, so I can only do what I can do. So I will go in there today, possibly during a lunch break. Lunch break would actually be best because I'm taking my kids to a birthday party tonight after school on a Friday. Um, so I, after school, I won't really have a lot of time. So lunch is probably gonna be best. That's all I'm saying there. And then you guys see that I'm working through my weekly checklist. And so the main thing that I wanna do in terms of um, my basic weekly plan is to work on my errand day today. I'm seeing that I'm gonna have like a full lunch break today, which doesn't always happen. Um, the full hours I will be taking it so I think what that's gonna look like is I will go drop off some donations I mean honestly it would probably be much more efficient if I would just wait until we have like a speech therapy visit and then just go directly after but there have been some donations that have been sitting in my car for like over a week now and i'm getting tired of looking at it and then there are some things that i said i wanted to donate that i haven't done yet so that would actually be perfect i can throw those things in the car and also whatever i pull out of my closet today when i zone clean i can throw that in the car as well and then i can just go drop that stuff off and possibly on the way even grab like a lunch or something and treat myself today um and so yeah, so that's kind of what's going to be on the agenda for me today. Also, we have decided that we're going to go to the zoo. Um, and so I need to order some tickets for that. My, yeah, I tried to take my kids to the zoo before and it was so hot. Like it was in the middle of summer. And so that was like really miserable for me. So I was like, you know what? Anytime we go to the zoo going forward, it will definitely be kind of like a nice crisp fall weather. So I'm going to check the weather actually first and then book those tickets and then we should be good to go there. And then you guys see kind of like my over the weekend goals. And so yeah, that's feeling very doable today. 
This closet brings me great shame, you guys. But it's real life. If your closet doesn't look like this, this might not be the channel for you. If it hasn't looked like this or it doesn't look like this from time to time, I'm sorry if you feel offended by this, but like I said, this might be the wrong channel for you. Don't worry, girl. There's lots of people who have beautiful closets, but for my girls, for my people, we need to talk about a plan, okay? Um, it is my lunch break, and I have decided that the first 15 minutes of my lunch break, I will be doing a little bit of zone cleaning in here. You guys saw me two years ago, maybe. Was it two years ago where I zone cleaned in here before? So let this be a tell for you guys that decluttering is a continuous job like I used to think that oh once I decluttered and got it beautiful then I'm done no because you're always buying new things bringing new things in the home your kids are outgrowing stuff that they have so you're constantly bringing stuff in and there's things that constantly need to uh, be purged at least if you're in the same or a similar season of life that I'm in and so um, yeah, that needs to be addressed. And so since I only have 15 minutes and I'm just focusing on it for one day, I think what I'm going to do is work on the tops. Yeah. I want to, I, I know that I got shoes. I will never wear again. I will, I, that chapter of my life is closed. Like all the heels and stuff like that. Like I will, I just need like a basic pair for like special occasions, but like some of this other stuff that season that chapter is closed at least for now like I'm just not trying to be uncomfortable um you know that often I, that's just where I'm at so what's the point of let it take up all this space um and then also you see that box up there that's children's toys my kids have enough toys they're like tons of toys in the living room so I brought those toys in here because I was trying to reduce the amount of clutter and toys that we we're picking up on a daily basis in the living room. So I was like, well, let me bring some toys in here and then we'll just like rotate them out. But the girls have just really outgrown the toys that are in here. They want to play with toys for older kids. So we brought the boys' toys downstairs and that's what the girls want to play with now. So I'm like, I'm just going to let them do what they do. What's the point? You know, what's the point of holding on to this? You know, and I'm just talking to myself what I wish somebody would have told me a couple years ago because I can totally hear myself being like, well, those are still good quality and they're good toys. Yes, but that doesn't mean that it has to be in your house, especially if it's causing you more work that you don't feel prepared to do. If you want to reduce your work, one way to do that is to give these toys to another family. Let somebody else who wants this stuff take it and you release that burden from your shoulders. It's like an instant way to like take weight off of yourself. And so um, I know that that was one thing pushback that I had toward decluttering before I started. I just didn't want to let nothing go because I'm like you can't let go of stuff that's good quality. And I know that the people who taught us that they had really 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 good intentions. But um, for the lifestyle that I have quite now it's not a good fit and what ends up happening is crap like this where my closets are like out of control and I would prefer to have that corner empty and have some space and to be able to open my window and have some sunlight shining here than to have a bunch of crap that nobody needs or nobody wants to play with anyway so I'm going to set my timer and I'm going to pack up some stuff. I'm going to go get some trash bags. I'm probably not even going to take that stuff out the box. That also toys there. I got toys on this side, girl. We got toys everywhere. Okay. And I'm about to put this stuff in some trash bags. I'm going to throw this crap in the back of my car. And I'm going to drop this stuff off at a donation center. And that's what we're going to do for today. And then we will revisit this closet every month until it looks better and next month i probably just need to just dedicate the whole week to this closet but um this is what we're doing today just to make it better and to get it and going in the direct the correct direction you know when you're doing these projects you do not have to commit to a full transformation you can commit to let me just do what i can to make it better for today and that's what we're gonna do so i will see you guys um i'm gonna record and do a time lapse and then I will see you guys in a few minutes. All right, there we go.
so it is 2.26 my time. Sorry the lighting's really bad, but um, I just wanted to check in with you guys and give you a recap of what was accomplished. Lunchtime was pretty crazy. That closet turned out to be a little more work than I was anticipating. Um, instead of 15 minutes, it ended up turning into a 25 minute thing, which is still incredibly reasonable. Then um, I think what kind of made it more challenging was I didn't really anticipate the effort it would take to drag all that stuff to the car but it's fine because i have one of these little dually dallies so i just stacked all my stuff in there and just took it to the car went to our local shelter not shelter ymca and uh what i call it ymca goodwill went to my local goodwill and dropped it off and then i came back and had just enough time to eat and jump back into work so i've been working and in meetings for the last um couple of hours and so um, there are some tasks that I need to do outside of being in meetings so that's what I want to work on um, until the boys get home and then I'll continue to work on that from there the boys have a birthday party this evening that they want to go to so I just need to make sure that I save enough scranth so that I can bake an allergy friendly alternative treat for my son who has food allergies and also throw an easy dinner in the oven. Usually on Fridays, I keep it real simple. Uh, we've been doing um, chicken wings for the kids and french fries and just some like something easy for them. So I will, maybe when the boys get home, I will pre pre prepare those things and then try to work on the tasks that I need to work on until it's time for us to go. So um, I wanna show you guys the closet um, so that you guys, really understand what we're doing here with this whole concept of progress and not perfection people the floor is a hot mess because it used to be covered with a bunch of stuff and that's okay um, i kind of tidied up the girls' clothes a little more i didn't declutter them just more like they my girls like to help me get them dressed so they like pull things off the hangers they make the hangers go all crazy so i was able to just kind of bring some sense of control and peace back to that and they have like clothes and stuff that have fallen all under there i pulled all that stuff out which is why the main culprit for why it took 25 minutes instead of 15 because i just didn't feel like walking over that for the weekend or however long up here you'll see that i decluttered quite a bit of shoes i had like stilettos girl and like all these boots i know i'm not wearing anywhere and then up here, there used to be toys and stuff. We got rid of some of that. Up here, I pulled down a lot of shoes that we're just not wearing. Now for my husband's side. Okay, so this is stuff that is our holiday planning. So I like to keep stuff in here because I will put stuff away and forget where I put it. So I kind of have this central place. I can make this more beautiful and I probably will. I'll probably get like a basket or something so I know what's going on. But we got your Halloween. We also got Halloween in the entryway closet for my boys. We got some Christmas pajamas here. We got Thanksgiving shoes and shirts and shoes there. So this is like my little stash for now. And so this from here to here was pretty much all that I was able to get to today. If you look over here on this side, um, those are my pants and like underwear and socks and stuff for my girls. All that stuff is kind of shoved in there because it's supposed to go here. But when I put it here, my girls are just at that age where they just want to help out. And so they be chunking everything out. And I find that I'm having to pick it up over and over and over and over again. So eventually I was just like, you know what? How can we avoid problems instead of always trying to fix them? Is there something I could do to avoid this problem? So this is my temporary solution. It doesn't matter how many times I like fold this and stuff it's not worth the effort for me to fold that repeatedly so it's gonna stay looking like that until the girls are mature enough to let me leave this stuff in here or until they go upstairs to their own bedroom here's some things right here that I may need to consider decluttering I'm not ready to let that stuff go those are some first certifications that I've trained for that are no longer relevant for me but you know you just put a lot of work into something so that's definitely like an onion 
and a little bit deeper into the cluttering and I will make those decisions at another time. But for now, I guess I could, you know, not have my stuff looking all rough and stuff with diapers and stuff on it. As I was saying, for now I can, you know, give it a little more respect, a little more pride, a little more dignity. And that's just gonna be a project for a whole new day. And here are some photo photos that I need to decide what I'm gonna do with, you know. They're not really helping anybody when they're all shoved into a little container. But you guys want to see some pictures of me in high school? Oh my gosh. But yeah, here's some photos of me in high school. Oh my gosh, where are my glasses? Oh, that's right. I had a, like a year where I wore contacts and stuff. And so this is what I was doing, you know, real thirsty back there. You guys let me know if you're a fan of like Usher. This was, who is this? This, I think B2K and Marcus Houston, more B2K. These are my people, okay? More pictures of me in high school. We're getting real throwbacky up in here. That's just really inappropriate, you guys. I used to like dancing. This is me dancing in choir. So yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. We're taking it all the way back, but Anyways, what I was trying to say is, yeah, so this side of the closet is looking much more respectable. Still, you know, a lot of room for growth. This side of the closet, I didn't even touch. And that is okay. Bit by bit, that's what it's all about. You know, if you don't have a lot of time, you can still use what you have. And, you know, that's what I've done today. And I feel very good about it. Also, the other thing on my checklist was I wanted to make sure that we were ready to go to the zoo this weekend. So those tickets have been ordered and now it is official. We are locked into that decision, even though a little piece of me is like, do I have this kind of strength, Lord, to be taking these kids out? But making memories is so important to me. And before I started like my system, I used to wait until I felt like making memories. And this sounds like so horrible to say, but I just was never in the mood. I was never in the mood to like paint pumpkins and do arts and crafts and bake and do all that stuff. But that didn't that that didn't mean that I didn't want those things to happen. Like I felt like that was really an important part of like the relationship that I wanted to have with my kids. And so what I would do is yeah I was just wait until I felt like and I was in the mood and then by the time I was in the mood I wasn't prepared you know so I couldn't get things done because I didn't have the stuff that we needed so that created more obstacles and so what I found that has been really helpful and healing for me is just to plan the stuff out treat it like any other appointment um, that way other things don't continue to be prioritized above you know your family and your relationship with your family because if you don't like are not in the mood to do something there's a bajillion other things that needs to get done and it's so easy to prioritize those things and then kind of squeeze out your family time your date night and things like that but at you know the beginning of the week if you kind of decide like this is what we're doing this is when it's going to get done it encourages you to plan your life around those things so that it's more likely to get done whether you're in the mood or not um, because family memories for some of us, it's hard work, it takes effort, and you'll always, for me, I'm always happy that it's done. I'm always happy to be in that moment, even though it took a lot of, you know, thought to get to that moment. And I'm always happy to look back at the pictures. I'm always happy that my kids are happy and see the joy and expression on their faces. This will be the first time that my twins are going to the zoo. So I'm super excited for them. The boys have gone before, but you know, it's always just a majestic thing to see animals in, in real life. Uh, the lesson that I learned from the first time we went to the zoo is I do not want to go to the zoo in the summer ever again. So this is like the perfect time of year, nice fall crisp weather, and hopefully it won't be too hot. And so, yep, I'm just super excited to get that experience and, um, as much as I was like resisting doing it now, I'm kind of glad that I bought the tickets, which further makes me commit to that decision of creating memories with my family. So yeah, so I guess I'm done with this vlog. I feel like I've talked long enough and I still have one really important thing that I would like to work on before the weekend starts. And 
yeah, so I'm gonna go work on that. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today, and I hope that I will see you guys in the next video. If you're new, make sure that you're subscribed. If you like, you know, moms learning from moms, real life over here, that real, real, and like this video, because that's a great way to support the channel. And I want to know your favorite color. Drop your favorite color in the comment section if you guys made it to the end of this video. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.